Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how to use Microsoft Excel to create a regression between two variables using an example from the stock market. So we'll take a look at uh, S&P 500. That'll be one of our variables. And we'll look at IBM, uh, which will be the other variable. And we'll plot the returns between Standard & Poor 500 and IBM in a graph. And we'll see uh, how to interpret this result. To get started, we'll take a look at data from uh, Yahoo. That's where we'll download the data. So if you go to Yahoo and type IBM, you can go to the IBM uh, you know, information page and go to historical prices. And you can uh, select the appropriate uh, time interval. I'm going to choose January 1st, uh, 2013 to January um, 1st, 2015. And I'm going to choose monthly returns, get prices download to spreadsheet and uh, you can save your file next go back to yahoo and uh, yahoo finance and this time uh, enter s p 500 and uh, click on that go ahead and download historical prices for that as well for the exact same time period which is january 1st 2013 through january 1st 2015 for monthly returns get prices scroll to the bottom and download to spreadsheet now you'll see a number of columns. Uh, you'll see the date and you'll see the adjusted close and a bunch of other prices like open, high, low, close, average volume. All you really need is the date and the adjusted close and you can delete all the other columns. I have just uh, copied and pasted the data from S&P 500 and IBM into a common spreadsheet and I have deleted all the other columns other than the adjusted closing prices. And uh, so uh what i will next do is i need to compute the monthly returns for each of these so i'm just going to say um, to compute the monthly return for s p 500 what i do is just notice that the dates here are organized in reverse chronological order that means the latest date is showing up at the top and the earlier dates are showing up at the bottom so the way you would compute monthly returns is to take um, the latest month's return and divide that by the previous month's return. So B3 divided by B4 and subtract uh, one from that. So you will get a return here and you can convert this to the percentage format and include the, a few decimal places, a couple of decimal places. And you can just copy this formula by dragging uh, the fill handle at the bottom right to the right. And then you can drag this fill handle all the way to the bottom and uh, please notice that if you drag it to the very last row you'll get an error that's because there is no further column i mean there's no further data in these cells here so you can just delete this for now and uh, work with the remaining data that's available so if you look at this um, the s p 500 had a return of minus 42 percent in um, as on december 1st 2014 compared to the first week of November 2014. Okay, so, and and so on. Having computed the returns, we will now um, draw a graph, a scatter plot of the IBM returns plotted against S&P returns. So let me just insert scatter and click on this button, scatter with only markers and click on select data and you can click on add um, the x values are s p data so you can just select all the s p data here and click on this button again and the y values are all the ibm data and uh, you can see that the chart is kind of coming in the way of the data uh, data cells but that's okay if you know the general location you can select the data and click ok and uh, for the series name you can just give it s and p 500 up oh, s and p 500 dash ibm and click ok and uh, click ok once again so you now have a basic graph of um, the returns of um, ibm plotted against the returns of s and p 500 now i just want to make a modification I just want to make this into a plain graph so there are no lines here and uh, you can also insert some descriptive text um, 
you can go to layouts text box and you can say here s and p 500 and you can move this a little bit to the top and you can insert another one and call that IBM and I'm just going to tilt it so now you have a graph plotting the returns of IBM versus S&P 500 now the next thing you need to do in order to plot a regression line is you just need to click on any one of these points here if you do that all the points will be selected not all points will be highlighted some will be highlighted like this with a four square dots around others will not be highlighted but ignore that and uh, now right click anywhere on one of these highlighted points and uh, click on add trend line and uh, choose linear um, in the trend line options and be sure to display equation on chart and display r squared value on chart as well so if you do that and click close you will see this line here i'm going to rearrange this uh, uh, graph a little bit so that it's uh, more appropriate and you can see there is uh, some information that's provided here you can drag it to a place where there are no dots so that you can see it better so what you have here is a regression line that kind of gives you a sense for how IBM varies with S&P 500 returns. Just visually, this regression line is sloping upward. So that tells us that as S&P 500 returns increase along the X axis, the IBM returns also tend to increase along the Y axis. But you can see there's a huge variation in these returns. Uh, some points are way further away from this line. Others are really close to the line. So that tells us that IBM varies for reasons other than just S&P 500's variation. So all that information is given by this equation right here. So here, Y represents IBM returns, the Y axis, and X here represents S&P 500 along the X axis. And what this equation tells us here is that for every increase of one percentage point of S&P 500 returns, which is X, there is a 0.67% increase in the return for Y. So that is also the slope of this line here. So for every increase in one percentage point of S&P returns, there is a 0.67 percentage point increase in IBM returns. What if S&P 500 returns were zero in a month? That means if S&P did not move at all in a month, what would happen to IBM stock? According to this equation, then X would be zero. If X is zero, then Y is nothing but negative 0.0167. So IBM stock would decline by about 1.67% if S&P 500 stayed completely flat uh, between any two months. Finally, you have this R squared 0 0.1056. So it basically means that uh, about 10% or 10.56% of the variation in Y, which is IBM, is explained by S&P 500. The fact that IBM stock is fluctuating is partly explained because the S&P 500 itself is fluctuating and partly because they may be specific things happening within IBM or other factors. So what is that percentage that you can attribute to S&P 500? That percentage is 10%. So that's it for now. I hope you like this. Thank you for watching.